Hey, it's me, Riker. Today we're going to have a look at Edwin the Usurper from the Greyborn faction. Now this hero wears plate-based gear, is part of the tank class, and his primary role is to significantly reduce the amount of incoming damage that was intended for your allies and provide a massive amount of buffs and damage for your allies as well. So let's have a look at his skills. His ultimate skill, Liege Lord. At the start of battle, Edwin creates a dominion that follows him around. Allies within the Dominion take less normal attack damage. So this is a little circle that appears around Edwin and significantly reduces the amount of incoming damage. When activated, Edwin damages enemies in front of him four times. He then creates a large temporary Dominion, which is stationary, in the area with the most allied heroes for 12 seconds and it damages enemies within the new Dominion. Then level 2, increases the normal attack damage reduction for allied heroes within the Dominion. And the level 3, increases the damage dealt by all allied heroes within the Dominion. So this is 35% extra damage and reduces allies' normal attack damage by 80%. So this is a massive amount of buffs for your allies that Edwin can provide. So this is similar to Arthur, where essentially if they remain within that certain area, they will get all of these fantastic buffs. His next ability, Disarming Flurry. Edwin damages enemies in front of him with three slashes. If an enemy is within one of Edwin's dominions, the final slash will also silence them for two seconds and reduce their defense rating for five seconds. So this is a defense reduction of 30%. So this essentially allows your allies to deal more damage to the enemies. And the silence effect essentially stops the enemies from using their abilities and forces them to use their normal attacks. The level two, extends the duration of the final slash's defense reduction. Level three, increases the skill damage of this ability. And the level four, extends the duration of the final slash's silence effect. His next ability, Rebels Reprisal. Every five times Dominions reduce normal attack damage, Edwin will counter-attack nearby enemies, dealing damage. So essentially any ally that is grouped up or essentially stacked with Edwin, this allows Edwin to use this ability more often. Level 2. Edwin's Dominions now only need to reduce normal attack damage four times to trigger a counter-attack. The level 3 increases the damage of this ability, and the level 4 or 30 engravings, whenever Edwin takes skill damage, he'll negate the damage and become invulnerable for three seconds and trigger a counter attack. This effect can only be triggered up to one time every eight seconds. So this allows you to become immune to all damage for that period of time. His next ability, Royal Favor. Whenever an allied hero within a dominion takes massive damage or equivalent to 10% of their max health, the attack is silenced for two and a half seconds. This effect can only be triggered up to one time every 10 seconds against each attacker. So if the enemies are stacked up on Edwin over here, this will essentially allow him to trigger this effect multiple times for the entire duration of battle, making him more effective by silencing them and reducing the amount of incoming damage for Edwin. Level 2, the duration of the silence effect is extended and its cooldown time is reduced. Level 3, whenever an allied hero within the Dominion takes normal attack damage, they recover 15 energy points and each allied hero can recover up to 150 energy points from this effect per battle. And the level 4, increases the amount of energy recovered and maximum amount of energy that can be recovered by Edwin. So this is a total of 300 energy points for your allies total and 2000 energy points for Edwin. All right, so let's have a look at his signature item, Traitor's Vengeance. When you unlock this specific signature item, part of the normal attack damage reduced by Edwin's dominions will be stored and used to increase the damage of his next Rebel's Reprisal counter attack. The level 10, increase the damage of this ability. The level 20, the damage of Edwin's ultimate increase each time a rebel's reprisal counter attack is triggered and the level 30 signature item unlock rebel's reprisal counter attack deals extra damage based on the enemy's max health and this can be increased all the way to 10 percent of the enemy's max health so let's have a look at his furniture over here when you unlock sphere of dominance the three out of three the radius of edwin's dominions is increased by 
115%. For Edwin's 9 out of 9, when a normal allied hero within a dominion takes normal attack damage, the attacker loses 100 energy points. This effect can only be triggered up to one time every one and a half seconds against each attacker. So this is a pretty significant amount of energy reduction that Edwin can essentially trigger multiple times if the enemies are stacked up or when any ally triggers the specific effect. So this is a pretty significant buff that he can provide for his allies. So let's have a look at how he does in battle. So when you begin battle, he starts off with the circle of dominion over here. Now this circle will follow him around and it is not instant. So if he teleports around or gets moved to different locations, there will be a slight delay until this specific dominion catches up all the way to him. So let's have a look at his ultimate skill. So as we can see over here, it creates a massive temporary field over here and this is reduces enemy normal attacks. So this can trigger on multiple edges of the battlefield, essentially protecting your allies from multiple sections wherever there are a significant amount of allies present. So let's have a look at how he does at enemies with a similar level. So I'm going to compare him over here to Veofor. All right, and this is a, another tank. Now any ally that is standing with Edwin over here will gain the benefits that Edwin provides, such as damage reduction and the energy region whenever they get hit from a normal attack. So as we can see over here, we have two circles over here protecting multiple allies that are on the battlefield. So let's have a look at the damage report. So as we can see in this specific damage, Edwin did a massive amount of damage, even when compared to another hero such as Verifor. So let's have a look at how he does at a much higher level deficit. Now I would highly recommend building this hero, especially if you are fighting in multi-stage fights, like in King's Tower, Graveborn Tower over here. Now over here we have a, a 150 level deficit. Now when you compare Edwin to another tank such as Grizzle Damon, he can do a significant amount of damage and in some cases he can do more damage than these specific heroes. However, he needs specific allies to be grouped up with him. So if you have any allies that can group enemies up, such as Odin over here, who can essentially teleport and stack all of these enemies on top of Edwin, where Edwin can significantly reduce their damage, silence them and take away a significant portion of their energy. Now, in this case, we can see that Edwin took the most damage out of all of his allies because Odin could stack all of them on Odin. So he is a pretty beefy tank and he has similar effect to Arthur. However, unlike Arthur, who if you turn Arthur around, allies will no longer be protected or gain the benefits that Arthur provides. Edwin will keep on providing these benefits no matter what, as long as the allies are within the two rings or the various rings that Edwin provides. So as we can see, Edwin is fighting four enemies at a single time when attacking these specific enemies. Now, as we can see over here, both Odin and Pharrell provide a massive amount of control. And in addition to this, they also steal a significant portion of the enemy's energy. And in some cases, the enemy was not able to use their ultimate a single time. So what is the minimum investment that I would recommend getting into this hero? Now, firstly, I would recommend investing. Now, the first investment option that I would highly recommend getting him is getting his 30 out of 30 signature item. The reason for this, as this significantly improves his survivability, providing him HP, defense, and magic resist, which is a massive on any tank that is on the front lines. In addition, his ultimate allows him to deal more damage where it can deal up to 10% of the enemy's max health. The next investment option that I would highly recommend getting him is getting his nine out of nine furniture. The reason for this is his nine out of nine allows him to essentially steal the enemy's energy, stopping them from using their ultimate skill. And in addition to this, he can trigger other effects using this specific ability. Now, in addition to his 9 out of 9, you also unlock the 3 out of 3. Now, this will improve the effectiveness of your teammates. So, if your teammates are invade-based heroes, or you can group up all the enemies or your allies on one specific position, Eden will be a massive buff ally for your allies. 
Now, his engravings are not that powerful. However, they will make him more tanky. However, the, the minimum investment that I would recommend if you would like to build this specific hero is getting his. Now, the minimum engraving investment that I would recommend into this hero is getting his 30 out of 30 engravings. Now, the reason for this is Whenever anyone takes damage, he will negate it and become invulnerable for three seconds. So this essentially allows you to become immune to all damage, allowing him to tank even more damage than tanks such as Arthur, Grizzle, and many other extremely sturdy tanks. Now, his 60 engravings is not that powerful as most of the effects can be easily provided through his other levels, his two and three unlocks.